Good evening, everyone. We're live on the Trade Decorator Festival. And on this evening's session, I'm joined live by Joel Bardell from Fix Radio. Um, Joel's got um, a group of guests, a great guest lineup. Um, we've got um, Simon the Painter from Property Ready, Nick the Decorator from NTH Decorating, and John Mears from Andura Coatings. Now, I can't believe it's the last session of the Trade Decorator Festival. Hello, guys. Welcome to the show. Hello. 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 <laughs> And thanks everyone for joining us. I can see there's still people coming in. Um, it's going to be a great session tonight. And I'm so sad to say bye bye to you all, but I'm already planning for our next one for next year. So keep an eye on our social media and we'll keep you informed on what's going on. Joel, it's over to you. Cheers, Paula. Go. Well, like Trevor McDonald in the news of 10. Right. Oh, I love it, mate. Okay. Good evening. Welcome and thank you for joining me this evening. For the special collaboration between Fix Radio and the Trade Decorator Festival. Uh, so for those who don't know, don't know me, I'm Joel Bardell. I'm the host of the Painted Decorator Show on Fix Radio. It's every Tuesday from 6 p.m. We're online, DAB. Uh, you can tune in from the app, uh, Smart Speaker. And what we do every week, we have guests from, a, uh, from the world of decorating on. Uh, we discuss all the latest, the latest going on in the industry and also just have a general chinwag. Uh, which we'll be doing this evening. Um, but this evening, I've got three very special guests joining me, uh, and I'll be introducing them shortly. And you, yes, you, who I can see through my screen, drinking a can of Stella, eating crisps, I see you. Uh, you can get involved too. So any questions, any messages, no, feel free, send them in, and we'll go through them as well. Uh, so first of all, uh, a little bit about me. Um, I've got my own business, and that's Bardle Decorating Services. Uh, we're based in the Bromley area and um, also known as Barbie Decor on social media. I've been doing this for a fair few years now and uh, in the past I've worked for companies in all sorts of environments uh, but now I've got the choice of what I do and I mainly stick with domestic residential work and that kind of thing and that's the sort of stuff I really enjoy. So um, right so let's introduce our guests. First we have John Mears from Dura Coatings. Evening John. Evening. You all right? Yeah, very good. We've got uh, Nick from NTH Decorating. Hello. Evening, hey, Nick. And we have Simon from Property Ready. How you doing, mate? What's up? Good stuff. All right. Evening, chaps. You all doing well? Very well, thank you. Do, do you yeah. need to do some of your sponsorship stuff, Joel? Do you need to do that? Fix Radio. <laughs> Sponsored by Leila Destien. <laughs> Sponsored by Leila Destien. Well, Bang, we, straight we in there. there. That's £10 great, done. Great. Uh, well, thanks for joining me this evening. Um, I, I appreciate you taking the time, especially like your busy lives and that you're all shattered after a long week at work. So Not I really. appreciate you coming on. Um, you all got your drinks? Yeah. Yeah, but it's yeah. non-alcoholic. I'm like, sober red October. You know what? Yeah. That's what you tell us, John. We don't know what you've poured in there. <laughs> yeah. Was it Simon so drinking bottle, straight then? from the bottle. And I said I'm on the vendor till December. But anyway. Uh, so, so lad, so um, so what's everyone been up to lately? What you've been doing? What's your current jobs? Uh, anything interesting you've been doing this uh, this week or recently? Well, John just drinks coffee. Yeah, I haven't had a very difficult week. All I do is drink coffee and wander around talking to people. Uh, I went to see the boys at Top Deck today, and oh, okay, that, there's a double plug for Top Deck. So big up Ryan and Brian and Ray, and yeah. Nick's got, I don't know if it's supposed to be a bandana. I thought it was like a face covering, but it can be a lot of things. You've gone to there. <laughs> it's an yeah, all in went... one. You put it where you like. Yeah, so went and had a chat with those guys today, We're talking about some potential new products that we're releasing, um, getting their thoughts on it and testing. So exciting Ooh. stuff at the moment. Are you going to tell us any more about that, yeah, John? Uh, well, yeah, got, I tend to do all my exclusive uh, product releases through Joel at the moment. So we've got the new antimicrobial paint that's coming out soon. It's currently being tested against coronavirus. So as soon as you get the results back on that, hopefully that will be a, a really good product to be putting into the marketplace. And um, we've also been developing a more durable, more scrubbable, cleanable version of titanium so it'd just be an enhanced version of what we've already got so 
Uh, it'll be the evolution of the product and next step up. So that's what we're working on at the moment. And uh, working on the names for it yet? Yeah, that's the worst bit. I don't know what to call any of it. Have you got any? What what should should we call it? An Andura extra durable, cleanable product. Call it hard. <laughs> call it hard. Andura hard. <laughs> and well hard. Andura rock well hard. hard. Rock it hard. Yeah. Is it Joel? Rock it hard. Call it Andura Giza. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it the Andura Giza then. Yeah, that <laughs> part of the titanium range. Yeah, sounds good, mate. Sounds good. What about you, fellas? We've been up to Nick. Nick Simon. Yeah, yeah. We have two fellas in this room but, with me. <laughs> but last two weeks, I've been working in a 16th century farmhouse, All which right. is original. So yeah. you can imagine, and it's lime plaster, not well, it's lime plaster, no plaster, it's got a mix of all things. But it was actually a working farm. And well, it still is, but they don't farm it, they lease the land out now. Right. And I'm not, I don't, I don't ever recall working in a house that's so old. I mean, the walls are just horrendous. <laughs> lime. Lime, yeah. Well, you paint. worked in that castle, didn't you, Simon? Yeah, what paint do you use? Um, well, it won't all lime plaster. So, like, in the kitchen that I did, I used just um, perfect matte. But in the bedroom, they said it wasn't lime plaster. But then when I came to get the paint, they said, oh, it's lime plaster. So, I, and it was the day I was painting it. So, I was a bit stuck. So, I ended up putting contract on it. Haven't you just got a Merca or a Festo? I'm waiting for it. Uh, I've been waiting that. a long time. For, oh, no, you couldn't have sanded these walls down. No? Oh, no, they were absolutely We're bumpy. falling apart. <laughs> Yeah, but well, all the crap. Well, it's funny, I had loads of cracks, but they haven't cracked, if you know what I mean. Really right. strange. <laughs> they were like really rough plaster. But um, yeah. I had to put contract on because it needed a breathable pen putting on it. Uh, sometimes you know, look, that's the sort of look in those places as well. You don't want to make them too perfect because it's, they're not really meant to look perfect, are they? Joel, I, couldn't, I could never have made it perfect. But honestly, it came out, it hadn't been painted for you know, over 15 years. Right, okay. Um, it came out bloody lovely. Customer was That's over great. the moon. So oh, I was well impressed. Nice, and she left a really good review as well. But the thing is, oh, well, we go. very low ceilings, very low door casings. I know they knocked myself yeah. out. Don't you've got a bandana on if you've got a bag in top like Tom and Jerry. <laughs> oh, I've, I've, got, yeah, I've got loads of eggs. Eggs growing out of my head here. <laughs> Four times I did it. I thought if I do it one more time, I meant I'm in the hospital. I was walking, walking around. Like this, <laughs> and I still managed to bang me head. <laughs> but it came out well, so I was impressed, and they were impressed, and that's all that matters, isn't it? And they've re booked me in for more work, so that's brilliant. Okay. New customer that was as well, and the so page one time. time. They paid me same day. Oh, and did they provide cake? No, but I rolls. did get as many coffees as I liked. Uh, uh, sounds like a good night. Yeah, no food though. I'm a cake. Is... Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I, I mean, I've got to say, I've got, I've got a lot of good customers. But you do, don't you? You know what I mean? When they appreciate what you do and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, lovely. So they left me a really good review, and I thought, oh, they're so nice. They're quite elderly as well. I think they're in like seventy. But right. I got we got on so well. We just talk and we just talk a lot of rubbish, you know, a bit like we're doing here. <laughs> but it was nice and relaxed, you know. <laughs> nice and relaxed. Simon, what have you been doing? Yeah, Simon, what have you been up to, mate? <laughs> okay, Nick. Come on, quick, 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 quick. <laughs> Carry on, Nick. High, high octane oh. stuff, let's go. We're out of time. <laughs> yeah, see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> For the next show, <laughs> Simon, what have you been doing? Um, what have been doing? As, as little as possible, as usual. Um, <laughs> you just have to ask Tanya what you've been doing. <laughs> no, she answers what she speaks to me. Actually, <laughs> she, she, she just to she just put your manager on. <laughs> yeah, I'll get my talk to her instead. <laughs> yeah, okay. Should we move on then? <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> do you want me to say anything, Joel, or should yes, we just go? Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> right. Uh, a couple of days off this week. Well, uh, <laughs> you've had all week off, basically. No, just today and yesterday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good week, Simon. Well, Delmar's will tell you about mine as well. Oh, well, we're yeah. I'm kidding. Right, I'll be serious. Uh, I took two days off because the carpet fitters are in a job empty, but I didn't want to be around them, and I didn't want to feel them to feel uncomfortable with me being about vice versa. So I decided to phone a client up and say, "I'll take a couple of days away." Is that okay? And he went, yeah, it's fine. So there you go. That's that's this week. Uh, but five bedrooms, empty property has been a blessing, and it's a mile up the road. So it's been quite good. And I've been using lots of Andura paint. Yes. Cheers, Sai. There's, there's, there's a plug. Um, but it's like a, you know, I've done all low sheen, uh, as usual, because that's pretty much all, all I use now on empties, uh, getting properties ready. Uh, rentals, empty properties. It's it's all pucker. So hey, thanks, John. Pleasure, hey. Thank you. Back to Nick. Well, <laughs> I've had a fantastic week as well. Come on, John. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, sorry, John. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> your left out, mate. Well, uh, I've been working on the hall stairs and landing, but he might have heard me moaning about my van. So last no, Friday, no, it no. broke down, and then I took it to the garage. It sounds like a really bad Craig Davidson, did it? So Friday it broke down. Monday, took it to the garage. They said they fixed it. Tuesday, it broke down again. It broke down again on the way to the job. And when it broke down a second time, I was sitting in the van and I probably used every, every word, you, every FC, anything else you can think of, sitting there going, Aah! and there was this old woman at the bus stop and I looked around and I thought, oh dear, she just gave me this look and I went, oh, I've broken down. And she looked at me and said, yeah, you ain't kidding, mate. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much been it. So. I, Today, I've had a few days off. My van still ain't ready. Oh, but I've actually used the wife car. Still, still ain't not ready. ready. They're, they're waiting for a part. He rang me um, Wednesday morning to say it's going to take four to five days to come in. So it's yeah. just, it's done, but yeah, it's done me right up. So I've had to borrow the wife's car. And um, But the thing is, I've, I've finished part of the job today, but there's still um, all the gear still left behind. So I've still got to clear it. So farther than that, it's all right. It's just a Bands are a pain though. I mean, if they go on you, it's just a nightmare, isn't it? It's just, you don't, there's never a good time, but what can you do? Adrian, Adrian Jenkins has just said Van Gate. So okay. <laughs> this is the ongoing <laughs> Van Gate saga. What van is it? Ah, uh, it's a Bilingo, Citroen Bilingo. Uh, it's, it's getting on a bit as well. Though. I need a new van. That's what it comes down to. I've, mm. I've kind of made, you know, I was just like, Brand. oh no, I can get another year out of it. I can get another year out of it by some. Um, yeah, snack it. I mean, by sounds of it, you'd look at it again of a day out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, okay, should we move on to the next bit? Next topic, let's go. Yeah, next topic. Right, so, uh, <laughs> should we talk about the last few months uh, and experiences, especially over like lockdown um, and the impact of COVID, um, now, especially as we're approaching Christmas as well. What, what do you think, like, um, as, how has it affected you over that time? And what do you think, you know, like moving forward as well, what do you think about, you know, we'll get, as it gets closer to winter, obviously it's going to be a bit more of a struggle for, for us to have other decorators as well, and they might be struggling to find work. What do you think about that whole situation and, you know, where we can go from there? Well, I'm not, I'm not having a problem with it. I'm getting more, more inquiries than ever. That's and I'm getting the work as well. That's brilliant, mate. Yeah, I don't understand it. Um, I've met a lot of people that because they haven't gone on holiday this year, they're investing a bit more money in their property instead. So I know of a lot of decorators that have come out of this with a lot of work still to do. Uh, I think as an industry, we got away with it reasonably lightly. Obviously, mm. it's not an ideal situation. It's tough and we're far from through it. But I think there's there's still a lot of a lot of work out there and the industry seems pretty buoyant at the moment so do you think, john do you think that it, positive on it john do you think that it'll be the effects will happen later on so next year come middle of next year i don't know but possibly uh it depends if it's yeah if it keeps going on for another six 12 18 months then you're gonna 
start seeing people thinking maybe I need to batten down the hatches and you know not spend any money unnecessarily at which point will people start thinking that decorating is a luxury they can do without yeah who knows but mm. it seems like a bit of a bubble i, I think mm, you've got to remember you know even when people were on furlough on 80 percent pay they weren't going out or anything like that so people yeah. have still had money in their pocket what's going to happen going forward we don't know but you know <laughs> They've they've either got a, the government's either got to let us all keep working to keep the economy going, or they're going to have to set up more furlough schemes. So mm. either, either way, hopefully there should still be money going into the economy, and people will be able to keep hiring trades and decorators in particular. That's one of the things that gets brought up at the moment as well. Is a lot of decorators worried they're going, can I still work in people's properties? Um, that's a big thing. I mean, how's it for you, Nick? Because obviously you you're based up in um, is it Bradford, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, how's it up there at the moment? The situation. Well, I mean, we're in lockdown anyway. Like, oh, right, okay. Up at north, e at north east and all that. Um, no, no problem. But you're still allowed to work, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm that's still. Big, that's a stupid thing. I mean, people saying, oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to go in people's houses, but at the end of the day, we, we I think, oh, we, we have to work. Lockdown. I mean, everyone's played their part, and I think now we don't know how long it's going to go on for. It, it, we really don't know. And I think we just we have to carry on. We still have to work. So as long as it's safe, I, I personally I just feel I can carry on. We've got to keep working. We've got to still still got to pay our bills and we've got to keep the economy going as well. So as long as it's safe, that's that's my personal viewpoint. Yeah, well. I, I think, think you've you know, you've just got to, you've got to you've got to adapt, and you might have to change certain aspects of your marketing and stuff, and do different sorts of jobs. Simon's been doing well on it because so you're obviously doing a lot of empties that you work with tan on and you know if you can get empty properties to work on all the time that's safe oh, and, and consistent work it's brilliant that's ideal isn't it it's a blessing what it's i do uh, yeah i sort of engineered it that way anyway because mm. i don't like working with people they annoy me <laughs> <laughs> you've probably been working with yourself too long simon <laughs> i find myself good company actually oh yeah fair enough fair enough <laughs> Uh, all right okay um where are we uh, right okay um going forward what's everyone's what have you got lined up job wise got any plans professionally or personally who's first me Whoever wants Simon. To i just priced up another house which is funny enough what we're just talking about is going into people's houses and this particular house uh the landlord wanted to meet me at the house with the people in the house. So I was kind of uncomfortable with that because he didn't need to be there. So I could have quite easily dealt with the wife or the husband, well, the wife and the husband together, obviously, not just the wife. But it was interesting because he wanted to be there. And I said to Tad, I said, why does he have to be there? I mean, that's just another person to avoid at two metres because I'm – certainly two meters or you know if they get closer than that i'm kind of like my app flies off my head and <laughs> so <morning> time. it's <laughs> that, that's a job yeah that's a job that's going to take me up till christmas so uh it's nice but it's tricky because we've got two kids uh wear masks i found it if they're going away on holiday for half term so i can make a start so just engineering it around the family and being safe and anti-backing and being absolutely clean and tidy, which we are anyway as blokes because uh, we're painters, but that extra mile. And today I went around there today just to quantify the paint for Andorra and give John the price and stuff. And she said, oh, sorry, you, you're so great at just putting your mask on. You don't need to. And I said, yeah, I do. So it's, it's, it's working with people and reassuring them. Um, so certainly I don't, I don't want to go into lockdown per se, but, you know, empty properties or peop in, people in properties, I'm comfy, but I just have to take that extra care. So, that's I think that's, what it's, that's absolutely what it's about. It, like you say, engineering different ways to doing things, adapting and just working around the situation. You've just got to be, have yep. the mindset of don't just give up. 
find a find a different route around it and make it work. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, totally agree with that. Excellent. Right, so let's go past jobs. Let's talk about some past jobs. Um, got any like, classic stories? Now, we always hear about the nightmares, the nightmare jobs, the nightmare clients. But has there been anyone like a client or a job or anything in particular that's really stood out? You know, someone just is really memorable to you, a job, client, anything like that. Starting a positive. Someone choosing far and good. Oh, is that really? positive? No. <laughs> I just like to throw it out there. <laughs> I'll get the ball rolling. Right, I did a job Go really recently. Right, I did a job and... And, and I mean really recently. So we talk about pricing and all that kind of thing. I price up this guy, and it's, it's a place in Chisler, it's quite affluent area, it's a gated community, it's price up job exterior, amazing okay. job, amazing client, but I balls up the price massively. It was, it was so, I just, I just, I cocked up big time. It was, there was a lot of work involved, but this is when we had that heat wave. And that's when I had to, I had to put like um, tarpaulin sheets up over ladders to kind of block the sun out and, and uh, and he kept he kept the same thing. He comes goes, is there more work? And I went, oh, it's a bit. <laughs> and, I was like, and he said to me, he went, because these places are worth a lot of money. He went, what I liked about you, Joel, when you sent your price off, he goes, you didn't like take the mickey. Usually people come in here and they put in a massive price because they're taking advantage, but you didn't do that. And I went, ah. Oh. And I was like, such an idiot, man. <laughs> and then anyway, I thought. I was doing the job and he kept saying, I went up, but there was some extras. Like, there was extras, the, the unperceivable stuff. But when it came to like, before I was finishing up, wrap up the job and going to send the invoice over, uh, there's a French fella, and I hope he doesn't mind if he's watching that if I do his accent, because he said, Joel, you've been working your ass off. Because that's how French people talk, apparently. But <laughs> he said that, and he went, on, mate. And he, went, <laughs> and he said to me, I swear, he went, I won't tell you how much it was, but it was a substantial amount of money. He went, put, this extra on the invoice and i mean yeah. no one ever said to me and i was like really and he went yeah i was like okay sweet and i was honestly i was just so taken aback by it but such a nice How one much? 800 quid sweet thanks i know but they were like i said there was extras anyway what 800 <laughs> quid's worth but he said to me yeah what extras are you doing it. for 800 quid job <laughs> <laughs> so you can't break like, my find out and uh it's only only fans is it all right i don't get mixed up and um <laughs> and <laughs> and uh yeah so amazing what an amazing amazing customer i mean unbelievable but yeah and he, and he but the thing is he knew what i was doing like you know like he knew where some clients but they wouldn't take any notice if i was doing all the extra cracks with more work they wouldn't have just saw their the original price but he knew what was involved and he he kind of um appreciated the extra work that was put in as well so i mean a lot of it was luck at the same time but yeah what a fantastic customer but it's nice to have a positive story like that because they're few and far between sometimes so, yeah that's that's rare is that i've never had that happen to me definitely so, I don't have another memorable, memorable story like that. No. Nick can't remember what he did today. <laughs> You're not wrong there, John. You're not wrong there. He's on his 15th can of Jamaican beer. Hey, it's nice if he had it. It's not, but pint-sized tins as well. This is this is my payment for working today. I didn't get paid. I got paid don't in beer. Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> every little thing. You got to be all right. <laughs> so, so on, you, must have a job. you must have a client or a job, a memorable job. You went, oh, I love that job. That job was hot. It's got to be one. Come on. John, what about you? All my customers are absolutely wonderful. Uh, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> I've got three of them on here, and the rest yep. of them are, are watching. <laughs> No, I am uh, quite lucky. I am quite lucky with my customers. Uh, yeah. Mainly because decorators never sit on the fence. Uh, if they don't like something, they'll tell you straight away. Yeah. Uh, which is good because it helps you do things better, especially when you're making new products and stuff like that. Like this new product I'm sending out at the moment, I know I can send it out to decorators, and if it's crap, they'll tell me it's crap. Uh, nobody, nobody pussyfoots around and just goes, oh, you know, thank you for the free sample. It's really good and blah, blah, blah. They'll go, yeah, cheers for the sample, but this was shit. 
So, <laughs> tell it as it is. Tell it as it is. Yeah, exactly. Sorry yeah, about yeah. that, John. I was just being honest, mate. I was just being honest. <laughs> <laughs> you're all right joe you're all right <laughs> uh, but yeah i don't you know i don't i don't i don't work on site or anything so i haven't got any stories where like i've fallen off no, a ladder really. and put my foot in a tub of adhesive or anything like that the worst thing that happens to me is nick you look like you fell off a ladder <laughs> me i've never fallen off a ladder i try not go up them to start with <laughs> oh yeah, well that's it then. You avoid all the trouble. All right, I tell you what. But okay, so we've had the positives, which read really well. Um, <laughs> nightmares, nightmares. We've all had nightmares. Come on, you must have. You might have some nightmare stories. No. No. Oh, well. No. no, no. Go on, I thought of one earlier. I thought of one earlier, right? And this, like I've said before, I, when I used to work at this company called Rock, the insurance job, I turned up. I used to, so turned up to this job, and it was in an elephant castle. And it was just everything about it, but you can't park. And this is, I'll go back years ago. And I think to park for an hour, honestly, it's probably close to 10 quid to park for an hour. It's like stupid, like, anyway. So I get there at eight o'clock, knock on the door. Someone answers the door, and it's this woman. She said, You're supposed to come here at nine. I went, Oh, okay, I wasn't aware of that. Not my job. This is insurance work. I just get a piece of paper, tell me about the job. So I come back, nine o'clock, fellow opens the door, starts having a go at me. I said that you were supposed to come at nine o'clock and you come here at nine o'clock. I was like, all right, mate. I was like, I didn't know anything about it. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, and oh. anyway, I, but they, my office told me that someone had already been here to start work. And I went, oh, it's time to start the work. He went, oh, you're a comedian, are you? And I thought, <laughs> I love your oh, impressions, Joe. <laughs> right, well, you know. And I thought, oh, it's one of, it's one of those jobs. And, um, and then it was just stuff all straight away. So parking, got any parking permits? I haven't got parking permits, but I have parking permits. I thought, well, it's like 10 quid an hour to park and you can only park for four hours. It's just, it was just the whole thing is a joke. And I had Dan Ralph, he was on the show quite recently. And he, we was working together. And when we was there, we was there for, I don't know how long it was, but he's come running over, Dan, that is, and he's gone, he's just told me to F off. And I went, oh. <laughs> And he's come in and go, I, know, I never said that. What I was saying was, I was like, mate, look, let's just get one thing clear. You don't talk to either one of us like that. We're not here to do it. We're here to do a job. Don't you don't swear, blah, blah, blah. But what we had to do, we had to go and pick up permits. But we had, I had a big like, transit van, got three seats. And we had to take him to go and get the permits. So I'm sitting driving. Dan's on one side. Well, the other, and he's in the middle making small talk. And I'm sitting there driving like... <laughs> But the games are oh, what a mug. I know there's so many. Oh, so like Honestly, this the story. I had one job, and I had this this woman, uh, and it was another a block of flat somewhere like Peckham or something like that. And we got to the job, and there must have been about thirty kids in the living room. So people were dropping their kids off. Take like they must be going to work, dropping their kids off. She's apparently looking after them. She buggered off. She went. She just left. And it was me and other lad. And I went, Where's she gone? It's all these kids. <laughs> and I'm I taking this hallway, and there were like kids on their hands and knees calling at the top of the stairs. I'm picking up all these kids, putting them in the room. <laughs> so it was like Jerry Beadle was going to come out. And at one point, I've run the wall, and there's this kid doing snow angels with the paint. And I went, oh, that's <laughs> it, man. Let's get out of here. Just, yeah, honestly. It's just me who's had this nightmare. I do know one of my one of my exterior customers was telling me the other day about how they got this contract to do the exterior of a house. Big job, and basically the, the customer rings them up and says, "Look, I'll go with you guys if you can do it next week because I'm going on holiday next week, and if you can do it while we're away, fantastic." So he pulls some strings, does this and everything like that. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay. Day one, guy turns up, turns up at the house, talks to the neighbours is allowed to borrow power from the neighbor and everything like that. The the neighbor's coming out with cups of tea and everything, paints the whole house beautiful, finishes it in the week, job done. Company gets a call the next week. What the hell's going on? You were supposed to paint the outside of my house. Well, yeah, we've done it. I've got pictures and everything like that. Well, you haven't. So the manager <laughs> drives all the way up there, goes, your house is painted. He's like, no, I'm here now. No. You're not. You're a, a fine. Turns out they, the guys painted the wrong house on the wrong, and the whole thing is just 
you cannot believe that he's painted the entire house. And they go back and they talk to the neighbour who was supplying sandwiches, tea and power and stuff like that. You go, did, you know, why didn't you tell us that this was the wrong house? And she was just like, uh, yeah, I thought it was a bit odd because, you know, nobody's lived I there in the last six months. Last night and I made a wish and it came true. <laughs> so like, nobody's lived there in the last six months. Well, why were you giving us power and <laughs> sandwiches oh. and stuff to paint the house if no one lives there? Oh, I thought it was a bit... What, you don't take sandwiches and paint them? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so they had to go and paint the other house and do it properly and obviously ended up making nothing oh, on the oh, job. Nothing. But I've heard, I've heard a couple couple like that painting. It was in the news recently, that guy that's painted like eight houses oh, <laughs> the, yeah, in the I wrong house. Yeah, fixed radio. I think they're talking about fixed radio. <laughs> what, and the boss as well went, oh, yeah, he's, you know, he's made a few mistakes, but I kept him on. I thought... Mate, he would have been out on his ass ages ago. He would have worked with me. That's why I worked my own. No, no way. Yeah, oh, I mate. think I think you're allowed one. <laughs> if you paint yeah. the wrong house twice. Mm. Yeah, I, I worked with See you later. Safely. A man who make a man who doesn't make mistakes is a man who doesn't do anything. And I thought I would like that, but at the same time, if you keep doing them every day, <laughs> sorry, wrong. No, 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 definitely not. Definitely not. All right, so. Uh, how did you all get in? You know, how did you get involved in the industry? Um, you know, obviously with uh, Nick and Sai, I was starting your business, and including you, John. How did you get involved in the industry? Uh, well, I I've always been in sales and marketing. Have been since I left school. I got into the paint industry. It'd be three years in January now, and it was my previous role. I was in an industry that got hit quite hard by Brexit. There were redundancies everywhere and stuff like that. So needed a, a change of change of role. The recruiter that I was talking to just said, look, I've got this job. It's in the paint industry. I know you've got nothing to do with that, but it's still sales and marketing. So do you want to go and have a chat? I went and had a chat with them and thought it was a really great company. Fortunately, they offered me the job. They got They offered me the job like, on the 23rd of December or something. So it was perfect little Christmas present because I've been panicking because I was out of work. Uh, and then as soon as I got into this industry, I was like, enjoy enjoy what's going on here. I, I didn't think, you know, watching paint dry would be as exciting as it is. Uh, oh, it is John, isn't it? It is John, isn't it? Oh, it's <laughs> gripping, isn't it? <laughs> You've been down there all day staring at water. <laughs> but I got, every time a mate is wants to like, paint their house or something like that they'll text me and go oh do you mind if i talk to you about paint and i'm like yeah i love it mate <laughs> i'll talk to anyone that will listen about paint because my yeah. partner's completely fed up she'll never listen to me <laughs> at all Weird, <laughs> she's giving me the evils now <laughs> but I, oh, I love paint mate absolutely love it i, have I, to say... I, know, I know you spoke about it in the show before but yeah. i'd love to hear it again so how you got involved in the industry how you got started up in your business Okay, well, I'm going to say it all over again. Condensed version. <laughs> all right, then. It feels like time, mate. <laughs> I got into a rut in my early 30s. I didn't know what to do. My brother was a painter and decker, has been all his life. He went to college, did all his apprenticeships and everything. He'd been, he was working on his self-employed for quite a while, even then. Um, and I was fed up, so I, I asked him if he had any work. He had some work. I worked for him part-time. And I really liked it. And then eventually took me on full time. And I've done it ever since. Thank you. Sorry? I blame Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> what, did you work for her? No. <laughs> she drove you to it, did you? Did you paint her front door one time? Shut, he shut, she shut down all the mines. Is that endure as well? I'd it have done it in a no, me dad said get get a YTS, um, get a trade on. So I went on the YTS. So uh, and Margaret Thatcher was doing the YTS, and back in the eighties, Christ, yeah. So Margaret Thatcher was she she did all right to get young lads like me, 16, 15, 16 out of school to get a trade, do the YTS, twenty seven pound fifty a week. I had. So yeah, that's how old I am. <laughs> That's what I were on too when I started mine, Simon. It changed much since, actually. I think it was twenty five pound when I started. Well, you were on last year. I was, I was a thousand pound a week when I started. 
Am I? No, no, no. Were you on the electrician's course by accident? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Four pound, four pound forty an hour. I think it was something like that, anyway. Um, nice. About fifty more than northerners. So <laughs> we, we could buy a house with that. That's right. You can buy yeah, street. <laughs> So anyone who's listening, everyone's watching, listening. Obviously, we said get involved. So you know, we'd love to hear about you, like how you got involved in the industry. If you're not involved in the industry, but again, if you've got questions, send them in. I'm looking that way. The camera's that way. I don't know. My eyes are going that way, like a cow. So yeah, remember, questions got them. Send them in. We're happy to answer them. Uh, right. Okay. So oh, this is easy peasy. What are some great products you like using? So I start again. <laughs> Go on, Joel. He's at the well, top. Andura. Yeah, Andura. That's oh, Andura. That's Andura. Right yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the customer's house because they left me a case. I mean, they're just like, no, I'm joking. Um, yeah, right. Oh. Yeah, Andura. Andura. Of course, Andura. They're titanium, mate. Mate, Matt, Pucker. Love it. Absolutely superb pump. Brilliant. So I know you use it a lot, like you said, you use a low sheen, you lose it, yep. you lose it, use it in all your uh, the properties you've been working in. Yep. It's a, it's a yep. top quality paint, isn't it? Oh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It, I had a job the other day and I thought the colour, it was kind of like a grey kind of torpy colour. And it was over Olm and White and it's all stairs yep. and landing. And I walloped it out and I thought, what the pen? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I didn't know if he was enough subject then. Yeah, then I got my brushes out and started. Yeah. Oh, your brushes! <laughs> it, oh, mate. You want to oh. out. Well, it covered in one coat, and I'd never leave anything in one coat. But I, I was stood there and I was torn: shall I or shall not I? But you the can't. Classic decorator oh. dilemma. Do just I leave it? Do I just leave it as one? <laughs> but went to Andrew, and I, I'm not kidding you. It, it 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 was that close to me saying, "Oh, I've just got to do another coat now, another four hours." But yeah, I didn't do it in vain, do yeah. I'm good. I'm a good boy. See, the uh, only the I only decorating I do, the only decorating I do, with, I do my own house, but I also used to do my grandma's house, and I. I can get away with one coat on everything with my grandma's house because she had quite bad eyesight. She, she wasn't very tall, so she couldn't see the cutting in on the ceiling. <laughs> so it was always one coat. And because I was her grandson, she was always really proud of me, no matter how it looks. So I was always just a one coat wonder. The whole house was done. I went in I I really everywhere. Down. That's and why you're not a <laughs> I worked with one bloke, but his old company was. And he said to me, he worked at this woman's house who was blind. He said she was like virtually blind. Hung the wallpaper up. He done it so badly. They said there's all gaps and everything. He cut the flowers out of the wallpaper and just stuck them over the gaps. <laughs> and I swear, that's not me, I promise. <laughs> that geezer's not me. But yeah, this is good. Yeah, dodgy. But Nick, you're a celebrity, mate. Am I? You've seen your videos. Johnston's. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I know you're, you're, that's a fan favourite of yours, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I do. I do like Johnson's paint. In fact, talking of Andorra, I was. Is it just? Is it just? That's a country, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, uh, Andorra, Andorra, <laughs> even. Um, I've been doing my daughter's bedroom today, and they picked Valspar colours. Now, Valspar paint's normally quite good, especially on V seven hundred range. Oh my God, they, they got this teal, three coats, it's still patchy. And I said to a boyfriend, I said, we should have got Andorra on it. Because it had gone in two coats, because it always goes in two coats. Doesn't it, John? I'm sorry, the kids have just turned up and I can't hear you. <laughs> Is that you? I'm on a, I'm on a webinar. <laughs> Shut up, man. Can give us a cuddle? I'll light it. Yeah. And I'll go. Right. Oh, oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> no, slow down. Uh, what was the question? Sorry. No, I was just oh, saying oh, I was oh, using oh. this Valspar today. Oh, yeah. In yeah. a teal. Three coats, and it was so patching. Bearing in mind that we're going over white mat. But I said, I said to my, my daughter's boyfriend that if we'd have got Andorra, it'd have gone into. 
So because your offense brilliant teal coverage. Master. Simon's had about 58. Oh, teal. Oh, teal, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, I know. Well, I saw your post. But did that go in too? No. Um, oh, man. We don't draw it, did we? Where's John? Oh, we lost John. He's gone. Oh, no. He's done a oh, runner. Hey. Hello. Hey. There he is. He's just changed places. Like, I've gone on to low power mode. Oh, dear. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. Sorry. Sorry, Simon. What are you saying, mate? Where were we? Teal. Yes. And Jura. Did it go in? Teal and no Teal. Of course. Well, exactly. But they What's wanted Valspar, so they got it. And I bet I have to put a fourth coat on when I go back to Modder. Oh, no. That's a pig, in it? And, and then you get to the stage off. where it's never going to cover. Yeah. So well, is it... the, uh, the first time I was using that Ticarilla Optiva Ceramic 5, because I've heard a lot of people talk about that paint. So I gave that a go. But it was in Denim Drift, the Dulux colour. It, it's, 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 it's all right. It's all right. I think it does look really durable, but it's, it's got a proper sheen to it. And I, I don't know. I mean, blues are a bit of a nightmare anyway. Yeah. But, like the cover. So it's hard to make um, a judgment call so far, but I must admit, and I'm not just saying it because you're in the corner then, John, but I'll, I would rather have used Dandura. But, you know, you've got to try these things because I've, I've not used a lot. Of, I mean, it, Ticker is quite a popular product as well, but you've got, to, you've got to try everything. So at least I can say, yeah, at least I've tried it. But, yeah. I'll, 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 now you're leaving it. Yeah. To be fair, though, the Optiva Op 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 5, is it? Optiva yeah. yeah. That's pretty yeah. good stuff. Yeah. I haven't yeah. used it. I haven't oh, used it. Of, I don't intend to use it. Well, that. Then, because it's a blue, denim drip is quite a dark, navy blue anyway. So blue, blues are, you know, the dark, they're, 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 yeah, blues are not great to, to cover anyway. But the but the walls I was painting were, were grey. So I thought to myself, it doesn't need any kind. I thought it should. And what I was doing when I when I rubbed down with the spiller and everything like that, I was putting a base coat of the blue over those patches like anything white i was putting that on first but still right. after the second coat was bleeding so and it doesn't look like the greatest paint for touching up so i was, I was you know, at the finish overall i mean um that's the job i finished up today and i'll get some pictures up on social media at some point it come out lovely it does look good even if i say so myself yeah, but, but um yeah I, I i don't know the, the paint um but it, it, it almost looked like certain lights almost looked very eggshell it had that kind of soft sheen and what finish was it? What finish was it, Joel? So it's called uh, Ceramic 5. So I think that when it comes to Ticarilla, I think it goes, is it like a, a 3, which is their flat finish, and then 5 is the next one along, which I'm assuming is even more durable, which was needed for this hallway. But it's so it's mid-sheen? No, I think it's supposed to be matte, but it, oh. it has a, it has an element of sheen to it. You know, do you know what I mean? Whereas the titanium matte is matte. To me, yeah. it's just it's a matte finish. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, our mat is two and a half, three percent. The low sheet right. is seven percent. Um, the ticket might be five percent, then if they call it five at a 45 degree angle, John. 45 degree angle, correct. <laughs> I've got it's a bit of a funny question, but is there, is there anything you use at the moment that you don't really like? I'm unsure about Benjamin Moore advanced gloss seen your twitter post I'd, yeah quite it's good though. but I'd, why I, I don't understand if you do the proper i i i mean i i, I still work as i'm using oil one undercoat yeah. one gloss i don't understand why you've got to do one undercoat two top coats on a gloss in what mm. water burst i just i don't you've got, get to it. Mind, you've got to change your mindset though and that, that's what i feel like i've done with water base i think you, i can't i don't think like it i've just changed the whole thing because i know what you're saying it's not like a water base where you can bang a couple of coats out in the same day because you've got long root three coat time so i think you have to change your mindset that you will have to do a couple of coats over a couple of days do you know what i mean yeah. with that, with it that don't, i don't see what the um advantage of it is other than you don't have any smell and it's quick drying or oh, is that the advantage yeah i think that's it really mate i think it i think that's it that's what you've got to weigh up the pros and cons. If you're trying to sell it to a customer, you have to say to them, look, you might not have that high, gla uh, high gloss finish, mirror gloss finish that you do get in oil base, but let's put it this way. Within, well, let's be honest now, within weeks or not, you know, less than months, that yeah, it's, it's, color. So you can it, say, it, it does nowadays. 
And a lot of customers, I mean, I must be honest, I'm talking about you, oh, smell of paint, people go, they stink. Like in the past, and I go, I don't smell anything. And that ain't really a good sign. But even like two pack filler and all that, they go, oh, that's really strong. I go, is it? I can't smell anything. So, but when you're in the client's house and they've used oil, they go, I've had them, they've gone, I've had the worst headache, I've been sick. And because I've, I've knocked it on the head, I don't use oil breaking anymore. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm no, open to no, knock no, it on the head. to me in ages. So, that's the advantages. The advantages are, it's, so even if it is long recoat time, it's touch dry quicker as well. Yeah, that. of course, yeah. Um, and like the yellow thing. I mean, that, that is that's the, the biggest thing. But I think it comes to gloss paints in general. Yeah, um, I, I have a problem with what the best gloss, gloss is. Gloss yet, but I think glosses, eggshells and satins and water based finishes I've, I've used over oil base all day long. All so would I, Joel. Long. I don't have any issues with anything yeah. other than gloss finish. But glosses, I just feel like when it comes to glosses, I feel like this is still uh, technology has to be involved down the line to kind of get it to that level where I don't think we're quite there yet. Because like they said, should I'm be able to get the sheen level in one car. Well, it might be something that's in the, in the pipeline, though. You know, yeah. we, if you look at it in respect of water based paint, it's still in every day. And that problem with Kane, since they've really been introduced, to, you know, I think we've, we've come quite far. I think we're quite spot for choice when it comes to water based paints now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go back a couple of years ago, they were awful. I mean, I, I remember me and my mate were doing the job, and we were just moaning all day, going, this is crap, this is crap, and you know, and it's just stuff now. There's a lot of choice, and I think we're spoiled now. Be honest, but oh, maybe totally. we last week, yeah, but we're, we're getting there though, we're getting there. And when it comes to things like, especially like two fussy blokes rollers, I think we've got to give a shout out to them as well. Those rollers, they, they're a game changer when it comes to water based paint. I've been using them today, and I've been using the Scuff X eggshell, and I'm you know, I've been singing whatever about that stuff, and I've been rolling the paint on the doors and all the flat bits of woodwork. It's, mate, finishes pucker and those rollers as well. So when it comes to water based, I, and I think back when we used to do the old base gear, I, I, I could never go back now. I, no. I love that, you know, it is just, it, for me, it's, it's transformed the way I work, the environment, and you ain't breathing in all that crap and that smell. And I'm not getting the customers moaning about it. It's, it's, you, do you know what I mean? So it's um, overall. Are you using yeah, the five I, mil sleeves? Uh, I use what I tend to do, I'll use the, is it the semi smooth, the 10 mil. Yeah. Roll it on and then use the five mils afterwards to lay it off. So you don't you don't lay it off with a brush? No, I'll, I'll just literally roll it. But but the thing is when it comes down to that is it depends on the paint you're using. Yeah. You might not get away with it with every paint. But you know, you, you work it out. Certain paints you use, you know that you know certain paints are level out. I used to use the caparole gear a lot, the PU satin. And I love that. I mean that was really nice. Um but I must admit the scuff it. Because the thing is the same thing. It, was, it took longer to dry. Uh, there's just a, it, the passity was on the white was it was good, but not great. But um, yeah, but it's so it's it, it's good it's good stuff. But oh, we'll be lost. He's gone again. He's so gone again. I'm coming John. back. John's gone. I'm back. Oh, oh have we got messages? Hang John. On a second. <laughs> John. Yeah. One thing. You know the two fussy bloke slits. I, yeah. did a, I did a, a practice thing the other day with a thicker, smaller sleeve. I did a window sill. Um, yeah. And it was just as good as the skinny sleeve. What, on, on, the, the, ten, yeah. on, on the semi rough? Yeah. yeah. Break, I, rolled it it out twice. I rolled it out twice. And I, I yeah. thought, this is actually good. And I thought, well, wallop, wallop, job done. And I rolled over it again, and it was just as good as the skinny sleeve. You know those ten mil ones. When you've used them quite a few times, they break in mm. a bit, so you can mm. still get in the moldings. So you can mm. actually use. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think if yeah. you're using the brand new ten mil one, then it's, you do that, and then you might. But um, yeah, I think it's getting used right. to the product. It's getting used to the product to, with the paints, yeah. and that was with uh, Adura satin. So I tried it out. It's a little sample, and the, and the chap just said, "That looks amazing, guy." I thought, well, you don't know it as a sample thing, but he's happy, and I'm, I was more than happy. I'm so used to like doing it with a brush, so it's like when I think of putting a roller into a door, I think, well, that's not how you do it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're saying, Nick, to be honest, but I've, I've learned from a lot of younger painters um, techniques 
uh, use it. And they've actually taught me stuff. And I'm thinking, oh, wall up that in, wall up that in. I'm not used to you. So it is like for me when filler, we used to fill up cracks with our fingers. Mm. At the end of the week, bloody fingers like split to hell. Star as hell. And when cork came along, it's yeah. like, can I really use cork? I was out always with a gun and stuff like mm. that. I'll sob that and chuck the gun away. But then after about two, three weeks, me and my old boss put me through my apprenticeship. We just went, this is amazing. It's just getting used to it after a couple of weeks, mate, really. just I know it feels awkward, but trust me, you know, with the murker, when you get the murker, with, with the yeah. fussies, you can wallop it out and then just, just play around with it, really. That's yeah, I mean, like if you do, if I'm doing an egg egg box egg box door that's six panels, but it's got the grain effect on wood, mm. like to me, you can get away over rolling on that because you don't you really see a finish on it, do you? I don't know that. Yeah, but a flush door that's flat, I don't know. I think, well, is it going to look right? I, don't, I should use one more. You have to get your head round it, mate, because it does. Trust yourself. Why don't you just skip out rollers and jump straight to spraying? You can just well, I've tried that, I've tried that, and it does work, but it's more trouble than it's worth. It's because I can't get me a drown that either, John. Yeah, I'm getting into that routine of getting it all Sorry, sorted Jack, first. Is there a bit of background? Is any background noise coming from anywhere? In particular, do you know? No, no, I don't think so. This is me. Um, I, Jack, we've got some comments here, we've got some messages I'm going to read out. Um, that Valspar colour you just matched for me, John, was spot on, mate. I is that from Mark? Someone called Mark Hawksworth? I'm not sure, but I've got eight minutes to go. I've got Brian Dennett. I'm T for five is the equivalent to Diamond Matt. Five minutes ago, non-yellowing. Four minutes ago, Adrian Jenkins. Just happening, AJ? Um, that's the biggest thing, AJ. Four minutes ago, Brian Dennett. GE is the shiniest water-based gloss I've used. GE. What's GE? What's all GE. What's G? I've read that on my, yeah. G. 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 Oh, I Sorry. <laughs> you have to send the messages again. Send the sorry. Oh, grand oh, entrance. Them. What? Oh, oh Benjamin 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 grand entrance. Grand entrance. I haven't used that. No. No. No, me neither. Right, let's move on, chaps. Right. Health and what? longevity. How can you manage the physical toll of the job on your body? Now, John, you must really struggle when you're typing on the computer. You know, I mean, your fingers. Oh, are just, what about oh, what about the coffee drinking? Oh, that must give him yeah. tennis elbow. Have you got repetitive strain? They, they say that. Red, mate. As you deal with bumping in your head, you put the top deck thing on it. You know. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They say that sitting down all day is bad for your health. So I'm, you yeah. know, I'm really putting my body on the line with what I do. You lot, I think you've got it easy. Are you high, yeah. are you in the high risk bracket, John? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I don't know about you. I mean, I don't know about you, Phil. I suppose my last show I just done was one of the questions and I was talking about some of the things. Mate, I think it's knees. My knees are so bad. So I have to, I've, actually, I've been wearing knee pads for the last couple of years and they make a massive, massive difference. They, they're a game changer, knee pads. Yeah, red, red back knee pads are supposed to be the ones, aren't they? I hear a lot of people talking well, about red backs. My, my legs are like, uh, they're like breadsticks. <laughs> All I want is something that fits. I don't want massive like knee pads and little like, tiny like bits of string hanging down. So the thing is, I've just got some DeWalt knee pads. I can't even, I think they're from B&Q and so they just do the job. But there's the other thing I brought up. When you grow up, you shorts, they stink. They smell like piss. <laughs> Absolutely. Nice. And I've had to get the odor and, and spray my knees up. My <laughs> trainers. Because I've been crouching down, standing like a oh, mate. It's an old game, just, just had a slash down here or what? And I realised it's just the knees stick. <laughs> They're just kicking up. <laughs> so, any, any other things though? Like, do you feel like just, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I, uh, Asian gentlemen. I have a. Uh, I, I used what, to have. I got every decorator I talk to has got bad shoulders. <laughs> yeah, I've got a bad shoulder. <laughs> Go on, Nick. You got a bad shoulder. <laughs> yeah, well, I I've got a bad shoulder, tennis elbow, a bad back. <laughs> I'm knackered yeah. all down the right spraying. side. <laughs> yeah, I should start spraying, John. That would answer all my questions. Yeah, exactly. But I go to an osteopath so on your body, then. regularly now. Yeah, and he sorts it out. 
Adrian yeah. Jenkins just said, strap some pillows to your knees. <laughs> <laughs> But they'd have to be they'd have to be feather pillows because they're lovely feather. Oh, feather duck pillows, feather. Nice and good. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Oh, oh God. 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 Hey, you got quite a bit. I'm on ten percent battery now. This is this is. I'm just listening to Nick and John. What was the question again? I don't know. <laughs> what what well, part of your body is knackered? I don't know. We're talking about. Um, <laughs> I tell you what, part of my body isn't knackered. Oh god, here we go. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Keep it in your trousers, Nick. Never comes out. Keep it in your mitts, Nick. I mean, your trousers. <laughs> How long left, oh, Joel? Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Take the turn. Right. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Um, I don't know where we are now. Uh, how is everyone? You smashed it? You all right? right? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. You all right? John, you look a bit... Ooh, I don't know, John. I think those non-alcoholic beers you just look a bit shaky there now, mate. Well, I'm not sober in October. I'm on a massive one. Sober October. How well then, you, John? How do you see your careers in decorating progressing over time? Have you got any... Uh, do you think you might take a step back uh, from the physical side of it, I'm maybe going to a different avenue when it comes to decorating. I am considering hiring someone specifically to make my coffee for me, to stop the sort of physical strain of putting the kettle on. That's yeah. a great idea, John. Yeah. Brilliant. How much you paying? I think that's superb. How much you paying, mate? I want to be interested. Yeah, it might be good pay, might it? I don't know, 25, 30 grand a year or something like that. Oh, I don't know. I might need more than that. Do I get a company? Nick, you could car? buy a house for that up where you're from. You're not wrong <laughs> there. Yeah. You could buy a street. You buy my house. <laughs> yeah. Who decorated it? What? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm exempt from this question because I don't. I don't do proper hard work. I can well, sit at a desk until Nick, I'm sixty-five. So I, do, you, do you see yourself just continuously doing this job? I, I would like to take a step back, but who's going to do my job? I, I do it on myself. Right. Yeah, I'm going to take a step back. I, if anything, <laughs> just maybe reduce my days. A bit like Simon. Work the odd day. You know? The odd day? The odd half day. <laughs> right. Oh, wait, I think we... You know what? We get a load of questions, load more questions here, but I don't know if we should start wrapping up. If Mark's listening, why didn't he text me and tell me? Because I don't know. Um, right. Do you know what? We've got one minute. I'm going to plug the show. Remember, what? I, me, Joel Bardell, I'm on Fix Radio for the Painting and Decorating Show every Tuesday. Right. So you can listen to it, uh, DAB online, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah. So, and the podcast is out every Friday as well. And it's going to be my guest, John, uh, Simon, Nick as well. So you can, the podcast is there. Shout out to our sponsors, Leyland SDM. Uh, we've got to say that. So, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, Leyland SDM, uh, they've got all your decorating and DIY essentials. So make sure you go down there and have a butchers. And uh, what, what's the time now? We are one minute away. And yeah, finally, got to say a big thank you to Paula for inviting us to take part. The lot of the, uh, the closing the trade decorator festival. So thank you, Paula. And sorry, John, Nick, Simon, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me this evening, lads. Honestly, you've been it's been yeah, fun. It's been, it's been honestly, fun, Joel. Well, I really appreciate it, especially on a Friday evening as well. So it means a lot to me, mate. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Hi, Joel. Hi, guys. Paula's back. Thanks. Hi, <laughs> uh, it's gone dark in all. here as you can see um Hello. thanks ever so much um what a great show um thanks ever so much for being on the trade decorator festival and thanks for closing our show it's been brilliant having you all on and thanks everybody who's taken part over the last two weeks um I've, I've just been totally blown away by the amount of support we've had and hopefully we'll be back in the new year with another trade decorator festival so i'll see you all then guys yeah yay <laughs> bye -bye. thank you see Have you next weekend, year bye -bye. You too. bye cheers paula thank you for coming bye bye <laughs>